Enter the Lord's house with thanksgiving. Come and praise him for his goodness to us. God is good. We praise him for soil, sea, rain, sun, of the farmers and churches, of the houses and the houses. Thank you, God, by whom we all pray. Please join us with our opening hymn, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. Please be seated. And let us pray our unison prayer together. Almighty God, you have touched our lives with love, and we are richly blessed. We offer our lives in thanksgiving for our salvation in Christ, and pray that others, through our witness, may come to know the same joy as theirs. In our Savior's name we pray. Amen. I encourage everyone to read from Revelations chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, and from the Gospel of John chapter 18, verses 33 through 37, which are one half of the text for Christ the King Sunday, which we are splitting with today. Uh, I will be sharing with you from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 7, and from the Gospel of Matthew 6, for, uh, verses 25 through 33, which are the texts that we are preaching on, which consists of our Thanksgiving message, our Thanksgiving Sunday for today. Hear now the word of the Lord. First of all, 
Then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself, human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. And now for the gospel. Jesus speaking to his disciples and to us. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about, where, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all of these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. May God add his richest blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy, holy word. Please stand as you are able, for joyful, joyful we adore thee. Giver of it. 
Please be seated. In the email that I wrote, I put a couple of verses there together, uh, as well as in the mailings that I put for the text. Uh, two comes from Deuteronomy. Remember the long way the Lord has led you in the wilderness for 40 years. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Of course, Jesus picked up on that with his temptation. And then the end of our lesson today. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Now, one of the things that comes to us today is what does it mean to be thankful? not going to be looking at the traditional holiday of the nation nor its implications thereof but instead i want us to kind of meditate to examine the state and the gift of thankfulness it is a quite human response since gratitude involves memory of the past awareness of the present and trust for the future. It is very much a human response. The Israelites, the Jews, are ones that remember. It's important for them to remember who they are and whose they are. And that is one of the reasons why they often go back and, and, and have a discourse concerning their whole history of how God had been active in their lives because that tells who they are and whose they are it gives them an outlook for the present and certainly picks them up to look forward to the future fortunate are we who wake up to be alive who wake up awaiting for the events and responsibilities of the day, and who we as believers have someone to give thanks to. Many times when I find someone in great depression, they don't want to wake up. They don't know who to pray to because they feel that there is no one listening. They feel lost. But the good news for us and that we need to tell, that we need to focus on, is that we do have someone to give thanks to. That there is someone who holds not only our today, but held our yesterday, today and tomorrow. And for that, we can truly be thankful. Scripture puts a huge weight on memory. As I had just said, remember the long way the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. That whole promise of after their, their, their enslavement in Egypt, they look forward to the promise that God would give them and would make them a nation. And there in Egypt, God did. It may have seemed like harsh times, but God brought them out of Egypt, a people, and sent them to the promised land and gave them a land of milk and honey. 
everything promised to the people of God and everything required of them seemed to hinge on this memory and this continuous memory process of recognizing God's mercy, God's grace, which is a prerequisite for thanksgiving. The portion of the gospel according to Matthew today is heavy on observation of the world around us. It's, on, it's heavy on the, the looking at today of what we would call ecology, the state in which the natural world exists, a state that is not yet destroyed or interfered with by human beings. Be aware of the qualities of this nature. Observe them, Jesus says. Look at the birds. Now, I don't know about you, but I know in our backyard we've had a bird feeder and we had to get a new bird feeder because the other one um, that was made by a faithful member of uh, Calvary when uh, we were in Cumberland uh, began to fall apart. But we still have the base upon which he welded and that we had to stand. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we had to get a, a, a new bird feeder, or maybe fortunately. Uh, but when we put the bird seed out there, you know, um, if somebody tells you that you eat like a bird, that is an offense. Um, because it means you just don't stop eating. Uh, and if you've ever seen these little critters, uh, how much they can actually take in, it, it, it is fully amazing how fast they can go through 40 pounds of bird seed uh, in days, in days. Uh, but yet, when you see them, you see the beauty of the birds that are there, and sometimes even the nastiness of um, the blue jays, that when they come, they don't like anyone else around. But yet, there are some that, uh, seem like they will throw the food off here. If you want some food here, take it, and they'll throw it onto the ground for the bird, for the, uh, for the ground feeders that will be there. Uh, and and, and it, it, it is truly amazing. Uh, but Jesus tells us today to look at the birds. What do they tell us? Look at the flowers and think. Think about them. Consider their growth. Consider their beauty. Consider their glory. There are many wildflowers that existed in Palestine. And these were the lilies of the field that Jesus was talking about. Nobody planted them except God and the birds of the air that dropped the seed uh, and scattered them. And yet they provided beautiful scenery uh, to the countryside. And Jesus looks at them. These are not cultivated, but look at the beauty, the natural beauty. Their adornment is glorious. And as he compares them to the most extravagant of kings in all of their vainness, who dress in gold and many colored robes to make sure that they stand out amongst the people, Jesus proclaims, not even they can stand to the natural beauty of these birds that exist and the flowers of, of creation that God has given us to adorn the earth. Jesus sees a direct involvement of the Creator in all of this natural beauty. And it doesn't matter that it's transitory. Jesus tells us God cares about what is transitory, what is passing. The yet other day, Judy and I, if we're near Frederick, we will go for a walk around Color Lake. It used to be where uh, I used to have to run the mile, mile and a half uh, for school, uh, where we would take off uh, from, from Frederick High and run down and and uh, go around Color Lake and go down to the covered bridge and uh, back up on the other side of the lake. Um, but sometimes we go uh, down towards Baker Park um, to 
Jesus because it's a little bit safer there to walk than what it is to uh, walk around the streets in Liberty Town, uh, especially when you get to uh, North Street and, and South Street, um, where um, uh, the cars just tear right down through trying to get by the, 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 the light. Um, but um, um, anyway, we, I, I was noticing uh, there was two houses when we were walking where the trees had dropped their flowers, their, their, their leaves. Uh, one was a beautiful red, uh, a, a beautiful red maple. Um, and it, 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 it just dropped them. And the, the, the ground was covered. It looked like somebody just painted the ground so that you couldn't see the grass. Uh, but it was just beautiful uh, with the way that the sun was shining. And then two houses from that, they had a yellow tree, a tree that had yellow <coughs> leaves that had dropped its leaves that looked the same way. Um, and uh, I thought, well, it probably won't be too long before people will go and, and uh, uh, bag them up and send them to the, 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 the wherever they send them to. Um, which is kind of a shame because all you have to do is just mulch them, let them re, re, re nourish the ground upon which they exist. But just that natural beauty of God painting, it just looked like a, a, a beautiful painting. This is what Jesus is, was referring to uh, as he was telling his disciples to look at that which is transitory. It's, it, it's, it's passing, it, it moves on. It appears to die, but it comes back to life. It is there. Observe the care of God for God's creation. The grass is clothed, is, is clothed with beauty. The flowers don't make an effort to be beautiful. They simply are. Someone cares for them. Then, how then do we worry so much about our life? How is it that we don't pay attention to what God is trying to tell us. We often worry about tomorrow, and by worrying about tomorrow, it keeps us from paying attention to what we need to do today. We forget that God has brought us to today and has been with us and will be with us even tomorrow. Thanksgiving is almost upon us, but you know, as the writer, as Paul reminds Timothy, you know, we need to pray and give God thanks at all times with prayers of supplication, with prayers of request, with prayers of thanksgiving. This should not just be a one time of year or one time when our nation stops and gives thanks for its bounty. But this should be an everyday experience where we see the beauty and the, work and the, the splendor of God around us. Jesus tells us, you know that God has brought you thus far. Why then? Why do you worry? Doesn't God know your needs? Just as he feeds the birds of the air and, and nourishes the flowers in the field, we who are, will be observing Thanksgiving on Thursday and sitting down to our meals, whether they be of ham or turkey, whatever food, we have plenty to eat. And many of us may be already thinking of the diets that we're going to have to start immediately after Thanksgiving because, you know, there's all of those wonderful cookies at Christmas. <laughs> That's one of my downfalls is uh, when, when Judy bakes some cookies is unfortunately I love them fresh out of the oven. Well, two minutes out of the oven when they cool down just enough but are warm enough uh, that they uh, uh, just melt in your mouth. 
But the truth is that we do need to try to pay attention on today, on where we are. We need to pay attention to those who do not have enough to eat. Mostly, why do we why do we not often think about this? Because many times I think we are embarrassed because we have so much. But yet, think about how grateful we are. And I think about not only how grateful we are, but how grateful you have been in giving of yourselves and giving of your finances and giving of gifts of giving of food, of giving to those who are less fortunate than we. Sometimes I scratch my head and wonder, when will we be able to feed everybody? When will everyone have enough? And yet, Jesus told us that there will always be those who are in need. Our past is wherever we are around the world, we are to keep an eye out for them. We are to focus ourselves, not worrying about what we are going to do tomorrow, but what we can do today. Today is a day for us to remember how different our national and our personal focus is from the one that Jesus is calling us to be aware of. The birds have enough, Jesus says. Flowers have enough and have so much beauty and glory. We who are affluent need to offer what we have, need to give what we can. As John Wesley said, earn all you can, or earn all you can save all you can, and give all you can. There wasn't any of this 10%. The 10% comes out of the Old Testament with Abraham coming into uh, um, uh, contact with Melchizedek, uh, who he, uh, a, 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 a worldly priest who had touched Abraham's life that God sent his way, and therefore Abraham gave him a 10%. And that is how that came about. But Jesus doesn't talk about percentages. Jesus talks about giving what we can openly and freely. But we who have so much, who want so much more, we will worry. We worry, will we have enough to get through in our retirement years? Will we have enough for our family? Will we have enough if we have invited uh, family in for Thanksgiving or for Christmas? Will we have enough? But we, as children of God, are called to something higher than the worries of daily life. Jesus ties the words of his ancestors together. He says, we don't live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This comes to the heart of us. This comes to the heart of what Jesus said when he finished his passage of Scripture today and said, Strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you. Somehow, according to God, it comes to us as we give, do so do we also receive. This is what places us into a state of conscious, thoughtful, and serious thankfulness. It is only when we strive for God's kingdom, for the values of that kingdom, that we forget about ourselves and focus on doing what is the will of God. And in so doing, we too act with righteousness. As we look out for the widows, as we look out for the orphans, as we look out for those that are in need, we need to be thankful that we can offer help. 
we need to be thankful beyond just having a good place to live or enough to eat or enough to wear. That's kind of selfish thankfulness. But being thankful and seeing that justice is done, that the poor are fed in our world, that orphans are loved, that the needs of those who are in need, that are hurting, are being received and are being loved and are being touched by God's presence and by God's love through us. First comes the striving for God's kingdom, a kingdom founded on justice and mercy and grace and peace. Then as we seek, as we strive for that, as we live out our lives in that same manner, everything else is added naturally. Just as, as Jesus proclaimed, the feeding of the birds and the clothing of the flowers. This is what Jesus has promised us. Let us then strive, strive for God's righteousness, and let us go out there now and to the world this day and every day and be thankful for what God has done and is doing and will continue to do. Thanks be to God. Remember and be thankful. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we do give you thanks for this day. A day that we remember Christ as King, as we have gone through your word. A large part of it this past year, it has shown us Jesus, your Son. It has shown us his birth. It has shown us his teaching. It has shown us the way, the truth, and the light. And now, as we come to this day where we proclaim Christ is King, we come to the end where he was crucified, dead and buried. But how that did not stop what you had to do for us. For you raised him, offering us new life, new possibilities, eternal life, eternal hope, eternal promise. May we never forget that. And Lord, in that alone, would be enough for us to always be thankful. But you have given us so much more. And Lord, we thank you, even though we are a small church, we thank you for the givingness of your people, for how they have reached down and how they have sacrificed, even of themselves, an offering for others. We thank you for that great gift. And Lord, <coughs> may we never stop. May we keep looking for ways of doing what we can do throughout the year. We may not be able to touch everyone, but we can touch those that we can reach. Those that we come into contact with. Even those that we do not come into contact with, we can reach through our gifts through our graces, through our talents, through our presence. Be with us, guiding and directing us, that others may give you the thanks and praise for all that you have done, are doing, and will continue to do within our world today. We do pray for our leaders, for wisdom, for guidance, that you will provide for them an outlook, a wisdom to help them to see how to rule, how to lead, how we can work together, not seeing us in any color or any race or any sex, but seeing us as your children. Use us in the same manner. Raise us up 
to be your children, to touch others, and to feel, and to feel the presence of your power, of your spirit, working through us and beyond us. Lord, we ask now that you will touch our sick, that you will touch each one according to their needs. For you know us better than we know ourselves. And you know our needs even before we ask. Touch each one according to their needs, dear Lord. And raise us up, whether it be of mind, body, or spirit, to a new life. A full life. A healed life. Guide us and bless us for tomorrow. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will stand as we are able, for crown him with many crowns.
the gifts that we have brought that we have placed into the plate entering or upon leaving. May the gifts be used for his glory within this community upon which we live. And now, may God's presence, power, and grace be with you, touching you, healing you, feeding you in spirit, in mind, and in body. May you go forth now in love, in the love that has been bestowed on us through the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. His name, amen. amen. amen.